This week we read the last portion in the book of Exodus. We are Jewish people. We've come out from the land of Egypt. We've gone through the Reed Sea. We've come to Mount Sinai. We had a revelation of God at Mount Sinai. And we send Moses up onto the mountain to get the Torah. Moses comes down with the tablets of stone and he sees the people with the worshiping the golden calf. The tablets are smashed. Moses goes up the mountain to receive the second set of Torah, the second, the, re, the remake of the Torah. And he comes back down and he teaches the people how to be, build the Mishkan. We build the Mishkan. We learn from Moses. We enact it with Betzalel as our major artisan. And we build this Mishkan. And at the end of this week's Torah portion, the Mishkan is completed. And the people are desirous of a relationship with God. So I want to take us back to the experience of the Jewish people as they go through the Reed Sea. They have a revelation of God. They, they, in, our, in our sources, we understand they can literally point at God and say, there's God. There's a revelation to the people of God as they go through the Reed Sea. The second time they have a revelation of God is at Mount Sinai. God reveals God's self to all the Jewish people who are assembled as one people with one heart. And God reveals God's self. And the people are blown away. They can't have such an intense relationship with God. It's too much. And they, and they're, it says, says our tradition, they die and they're brought back to life. And they tell Moses to go up on the mountain and get the Torah. And Moses comes down. And in that interim where Moses is missing, the people panic. The people are fearful. They want to have a relationship with God. And they don't know how to do it because they've only done it through Moses. And now they're fearful that Moses is gone and they build this golden calf. We, we spoke about that. And, uh, and, um, and the golden calf was something that they were investing their resources and they gave to build this golden calf. Some, not all the Jewish people, but some people stood by. There was, I don't want to talk about the golden calf. And I want to talk about the idea of revelation and our experience of having God, having an experience of God. So God comes, God says to Moses, here, I'm giving you instructions how to build a Mishkan. And the Mishkan, if you follow the directions and do exactly as God says, build it this way, my presence will ride, reside among you. And Moses brings down all the details and all the materials that are needed to build this Mishkan. And the people receive the directions of how to build the Mishkan and they build the Mishkan. And at the end of this week's Torah portion, they are blessed with the presence of God residing in this Mishkan. What's really interesting is that if you look at the beginning of Genesis, when God creates the world, an infinite God is creating a space for mankind to live. It takes 31 sentences in the Torah to describe how God does that. 31 sentences. God gives directions to the Jewish people of how to build a, an abode, a place for God to exist in our world. A finite man making space for an infinite God. Finite man making space for an infinite God takes hundreds of sentences to describe how to do that. And the people follow the directions, but they don't really know how to do it. They know what they're given and what they're told, but the result, the end result of God residing in our midst is not up to us. What's up to us is putting the effort in. So the people donate, and we've read about the people giving. They give their gold and their silver and their copper and their jewels and their animal hides, and they give all the raw materials to make up the Mishkan. And led by Betzalel, the major artisan, who is infused with knowledge and wisdom and insight, they build this Mishkan. And miraculously, <laughs> the vessels come to be. And miraculously, it gets put up. And miraculously, God's presence resides in their midst. So what I'd like to suggest is that we are desirous of a relationship with God. And God is a desirous of relationship with us. And when we put our work in, when we contribute, when we give, when we do what God tells us to do, we build a structure that God's presence can manifest itself in. The physical world is infused with godliness, just like a person is a combination of body and soul. We have a body and inside our body or around our body or animating our body is our soul. The soul is an infusion of God, the breath of God. The breath of God is our neshama. It's infused into our physical body. Our physical body carries our spiritual soul. 
The body without a soul is not animated. The soul can't exist without the body in this world. The two need each other, but we are not our body. We are our soul. So too, we look at the physical world. We see physicality. We can touch things. We can see things. We can hear things. It's physical world we live in. But just like the body isn't who we are, the physical world isn't the be all and end all. Behind the scenes, inside of nature is God. Nature is the veil that hides God. And we're in the month of Adar. We're in the month leading up to Purim where there's the hiddenness of God and our capacity to reveal godliness in the world. The first two revelations that I mentioned to you about the revelation of God at the Reed Sea and the revelation of God at Mount Sinai were given to the people. But now that they're building the Mishkan, they're putting the work of their hands, creating a structure the way God tells them to, so that God's presence can be manifest. And I would suggest that's exactly what we get to do today. We get as a combination of body and soul, we get to function in this world to physically by our actions, by our intentions, by our thoughts, by our words, reveal godliness in the world. When we visit the sick, we're bringing God with us. When we light Shabbat candles, we're infusing our home with holiness. We're revealing holiness in the world. When we eat matzah on Pesach, on Passover night, we're, 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 we're closing the circuit. God's here and here's your way to do it. Here's your way to connect. Here's the mitzvah that connects you to God. And when you do it, you reveal godliness. That's closing the circuit. And we get to do that. And I want to give one last example, which I see in my work of the Chavra Kedisha. We wash a dead body and we are supremely um, sensitive to the holiness of the soul that's hovering over its body. We wash with love. We say um, sentences of love and, and affirmation, and we are washing the body, bringing that the lady in our care to as holy and as pure as a state as we can do it. And the rest is up to God. When we take the dead body through a mikvah experience, we declare the, the, our, the lady in our care, we declare her pure, but we aren't make her pure. We do our actions. We put her in the mikvah and the purity that is conferred upon her comes from God. Just like we put all the work into building the Mishkan and God residing in our midst is up to God to bless the work of our hands. And my blessing to us is that God blesses the work of our hands, that we get to be the conduits to re reveal God in the world, to bring more light into this dark world. And finally, one more point. The Mishkan, this tabernacle, has a hundred sockets, these foundational sockets that hold the beams, that holds everything else up. Silver sockets made from the shekel, the half shekel that we spoke about before, that the people bring as a, as a donation. They're bringing the half shekel, this silver coin that's melted down, and it's made into these sockets. It's the foundation of the world. And the word for sockets is, is uh, adonim. They're the adonim. Each one is an adon. And we refer to God as an Adon, Adon Olam, master of the universe. So the foundation of the Mishkan are the Adonim. And the foundation of the world is godliness. And what we get to do by the work of our hands is create space, create a structure, create the capacity to God, for God to be revealed in this world. And my blessing to all of us is that we line ourselves up such that the work that we do and the way that we are in the world, we, it, through that work and through the way we are, that we are able to reveal more godliness and bring more light into the world.